And the only thing that's yeah. constant is change. And also yeah. the reality moves. And maybe that's the other thing is, one, I also, I encourage people, you need to conform as much as possible. Mm. That's one. Mm. But I also tell them there's also power in non-conformance. Is if the, sometimes you have to follow the herd so that you're not ostracized. But in following the herd, that doesn't mean that you have to do everything the herd does. So it is finding a balance between what's socially acceptable and what, or what is acceptable by the community based on your values and principles. And some of the things you may have, because we, we're not, we're not, we don't have a single facet. So if you're multifaceted mm -hmm. and the only way you can achieve things is you can't know a person a hundred percent. So what you do is in each facet, make sure that you're showing them that aspect of you, which one they can relate to, they can deal with, because at times it may mean you not, you may not have to expose all of yourself. Now, somebody will say, yeah, but that's not authentic. I will say, so what is authenticity? What is vulnerability? Why would you say something when in the community where you're at, it, it is going to, you're going to be ostracized for that? So I think the idea is also being able to get some level of control over your own personal needs and wants, because I think, uh, I don't know who says it, who said it, that a person who cannot, who fails to control their desires is actually lost because mm. if you can't control your desires, the delayed gratification, playing the long game, it essentially means that you're not in control because you cannot control your core desires and so on. Mm. Yeah. So controlling them and also being able to do what is right and appropriate in the community of people you're in is very important. But at the same time, you must ensure that you're still consistent with your principles and values, which I believe should be your non-changing. Like your principles mm -hmm. and your values should be sort of immovable or they should be sort of stuck because they are your anchors in whatever tide you're flowing in. However, you must be willing at times to push on those and say, but maintain, I think I, I like... Uh, I've been listening to manliness podcasts and that age post. I, I listen to the, the art of manliness and order of man and that age podcasts. And they talk about manliness. They keep bringing in all these different people, but you find multiple perspectives whereby you're talking about sovereignty. Like I must be able to make my, I must have a basis for me to be sovereign. I must have, I must be able to provide, preside, and protect my family. If I can't do those things, and they all build on each other, because when you provide over your family, when you provide for your family, then you have, it means you can grow to protect it, then you can preside over it. Like, mm. you know, that means you're sovereign, which means you can maintain integrity. And provision doesn't mean you have to give your children what everybody else that has. If everybody else is buying $400 Nike, or, or Jordans or some sneakers that have come out, you must instill values in your children whereby you say, okay, those ones are out. If you want them, you're going to have to work for them, right? There's this, you, you must use that as a way of instilling value, but we're not saying they should be, they should have nothing or they should have everything, but we should find a balance whereby mm -hmm. when they learn, you have, you know, we, we have this discussion in my household is that, you're only entitled to a bed, food, at least the basic meals, that's shelter, like, and, and me to pay your school fees. Everything else, like those five necessary human rights, right? But everything else is a privilege that I and your mother give to you, and they can be withdrawn at any time. You're not entitled to a, you're not entitled to a phone. You're not entitled to watch TV. You're not entitled to internet. It's something you work for. So the way you pay us back is be excellent at school, deliver good grades. When you're home, be good to your siblings, and do your fair mm -hmm. share of your chores. I'm not going to pay you for chores, but I still, I pay for them in other ways. I may not pay you directly, but mm -hmm. that's where your shopping budget is and so on, and that's where all these extra things come from, because you've earned them. So we're trying to also build that, push that, that mantra is that you have to earn these things. And in life, everything is earned. Either it's inherited, whereby it's earned by virtue of your standing in society and so on, or you have to work hard for it. And the key is, the harder you work, I think somebody said, 
the harder I work, the luckier I get. True, because luck is when opportunity meets uh, preparation. So you must make sure that that happens so often because you've put in the hours and now you're riding on it. But that doesn't mean you stay still. I think, you know, that's also the other drive. Like passive income is not passive at all. Like everybody's talking about, oh, have this passive income, but it's not passive because you have to keep an eye. Like you can't say I'm in, investing in stocks and bonds and so on. And you're not keeping an eye on where on the direction the bonds are going. What happens if they get wiped out? You know, there's yeah. work that has to be done. Probably not as much, but you know, the you you sort of have to spend like you you can't, like you said, you can't stay still because when you stay still, the world is moving, so it will leave you behind. So you and you have to do a lot more than just maintain the minimum trajectory in life. You sort of have to go over and above. So that at least you know, you have some buffer, you know, if, yes. if you have a bad day or if you have a shock, you don't go into the red totally. Like life doesn't like eat you up and spit you out, but rather you have some kind of buffer whereby you can go through that. You have a support system that can help you get back on your feet. And that is the measure of a good life. I think that is the measure of people who are willing to go the extra mile for you to support you that's your investment. Like they say, it's a, it's a, it's an account you just keep depositing into, and you don't have to, you don't have to withdraw from it. I